you're not in danger of getting stabbed by your own ball well. Superbrewers.com and today I'm here to talk about putting a weldless bulkhead in your kettle or hot liquor tank or you can even use this in a fermenter. As you can see if you're watching the video of this, um, the ball valve and the nipple stick out a good four inches or more um, and so that's extra distance that you have to hold that pedal away from your body. Recently, I noticed they mount their ball valves directly under one, one of the handles. And so that's what I'm gonna do with the bulkhead that I'm installing. And the benefit of that is it doesn't matter which way you grab the handles, you pick them up, and you're not in danger of getting stabbed by your own ball. Here is everything that we're going to need to finish this project other than the kettle. Here is the ball valve and bulkhead assembly that I purchased as a kit. This one has a nut in the middle so that it can be held tight while you tighten down the, the internal nut. We're also going to need a hammer and nail uh, just to mark where we're going to put the hole um, so we know where to drill. Uh, we're going to need hearing protection because uh, drilling kettles is really, really loud. So, um, yeah, make sure you have earplugs or hearing protection. Um, I'll get those ready to go. And then once the hole is in place, we have some fine grade sandpaper uh, just to clean up the edges so that uh, there's no shards uh, sticking out that could cut you while you're working. Um, so that's gonna be important. And then the step bit is, this I believe is a 11 step bit and it goes from up to seven eighths. Um, and we're going to go to the second to last step is 13 sixteenths of an inch, which is actually the diameter we're going to need. If you're doing a thick kettle, you might want to pick up some cutting oil. Uh, I'm going to just be using a little dab of dish soap. And what that'll do is that will lubricate the bit as it cuts the stainless steel so that it will cut it more smoothly. I have a work surface with a trough in the middle. This is going to be essential since we're working on a kettle, which is round and it could roll away, um, especially since I'm gonna be adding the ball valve under one of the handles, so that's not gonna stop it from rolling. So if you don't have a work surface like this, you can just screw down a couple two by fours uh, in place to hold your kettle or uh, even just prop it up with a couple two by fours and then if you have uh, a towel or something to put inside the kettle that might help dampen the noise. Gonna line it up uh, with the handle. I will oops, mark the center. where I'm gonna want it. Regular dish soap. Um, we like this instead of that big squeeze bottle, but just put a drop there. Get your hearing protection on, and then let's drill this.
perfect. Make sure you go slow. Um, I mean, you want your drill to run as fast as it can, but don't just put a ton of force behind it. There is one little piece over here that there's a, a jagged piece of metal sticking out, so you want some fine grade sandpaper. Clean up the edge, and then you can stand it up. And do the same thing on the inside. And there's actually a lot more furs on the inside here. So, and then once you got it smoothed out, then we're ready to install the bulkhead. It's just standard Teflon tape. Um, this is going to help lock up the threads and prevent water leaks. Um, you don't need to go crazy here. There's the bulkhead and then we are going to put um, the washer on and slide it as far back as we can get it. This is going to get scooted down over that washer. And then that's going to go on just like that. Alright, I am holding the outside of this and then we're just going to slide that silicone gasket on. And then again with this, you want to make sure the cutout is towards the gasket. I'm not going to tighten it down a ton here. I need this to be able to move um, so we can make sure the ball valve is aligned. Here we have the ball valve and we're just going to thread this back on the outside. And if you actually have it closed, it gives you something nice to grip. And then hold that back nut and then turn it until it's there. A nice level wall valve. Once you have it finger tightened like this, um, then you'll actually need a large wrench or a crescent wrench, um, and you'll actually need to tighten the nut. And it, I'm turning it backwards because it's actually tightening into the ball belt. And once it's level like that, then you can come back and hold this steady and then tighten the internal. And finger tight should be good enough. I like the way that turned out. Grew up an adventure. <laughs>